All right. So final piece of the puzzle, sodium. Whatever. <laughs> um. So first off, a disclaimer. I mean, I've I've been doing this for two years. Um. At least the general idea of what I'm about to show you, but there's no peer-reviewed evidence on it. And so because of that, I've wanted to keep it to myself because I'm scared of, of hurting somebody, right? But with that said, like, it's worked very well for me. And for other Addisonians who I've talked with about this and they've tried it, it's worked very well for them. Um, and it is based on, like, physiological understanding. It's just nobody's taken that understanding and applied it to Addisonians before. So it's not like this is just totally out of left field. It's just nobody's applied it to our specific disease population before, um, which is something you'd want to see because you, you, know, you have a great theory, right? But then you have to actually apply that theory and see if it works. Um, and I'd like to see that in a real study, not just me and a few anecdotes, right? Well, I'm, not, I'm past a few now, but so that'd be my ideal, but then I contacted endocrinology journals and they weren't too, I don't know, they, they showed no interest at all. So I'm like, well, if nobody's going to publish this, and I think that it can help a lot of people, and then the, the risk is quite minimal, um, like, well, whatever, I might as well share it. So, and honestly, the main thing that like pushed me over the edge with that decision was an Estonian contacted me who passed out from low blood pressure and she broke her neck. And I'm like, how am I supposed to deal with that? Like, I really think I know why. I think a low blood pressure is largely related to what we're about to talk about now. And I'm like, well, if she would have seen something that I, or a video or whatever on it, like maybe it wouldn't have happened. And she's not the first one to send me something like that. So, yeah, that's why I'm sharing this. Take it with... I mean, I definitely suggest like talking it over with your endocrinologist before you jump in because there isn't peer-reviewed evidence. Um, I think they'll think it makes sense, um, but yeah, and it largely falls in line with what an endocrinologist will say. They just wouldn't like formally uh, establish it like this. So anyway, first off, uh, the first thing we need to consider is blood volume. So volume is just a measure of space. Hopefully that makes sense. So that should make sense. <laughs> like a big room is large volume, small room, small volume. Um, and I guess also like, since I put this here, I might as well mention it. So like volume will just be, you know, like this amount. So we're talking about blood. I didn't want pictures of blood or like blood cups. That'd be like really gross. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea of volume. It just is only related to space, not to uh, weight or mass. Um, but regardless, so we're talking about the total amount of blood that's in our bodies. So your blood volume could be five liters, your blood volume could be six liters. Um, that's what we're talking about. And that's like, will largely contribute to blood pressure and stuff. So. Yeah, well, I guess that's a good segue. So basically, like, a lot of times we're told to limit sodium, right? And that's one of the biggest hurdles for Addisonians when we're talking about this is because we're always told that in order to be healthy, you need to eat very little sodium. Or, yeah, less than we normally do because we have so much processed food in our diets now, right? But they largely say that because of blood pressure. Um, so blood pressure will just be, like, if you have a lot the volume, so it makes sense if you have a lot, like let's say you have, I don't know, like 10 gallons in there, and you're going to be like bursting at the seams because there's just so much stuff in there. So your blood pressure will be high um, because the blood pressure, the blood is pushing so hard against the arteries and veins, mostly arteries. Um, but Yeah, so that's that's the problem with high blood pressure. But then the low pressure, blo low blood pressure, is not e I wouldn't say equally problematic, but like it's generally our problem as Addisonians. 
um, because we, we can't retain that sodium very well. So everybody else is avoiding sodium because they need to, or else I get high blood pressure and a rupture or something. I don't know. Um, but then for us, since we can't retain sodium that well, we generally err towards the low blood uh, pressure. Um, yeah, and that's and that's largely influenced by aldosterone. Aldosterone is one of the strongest hormones for uh, acting in your kidneys to make. I was going to say blood, but to make water and sodium come back into the body. So hopefully that makes sense. So, so these things will be filtered into the kidneys, right? Because the kidneys will filter a lot of stuff. And so it'll come through them, but then your body pulls back in what it wants to keep. And, and aldosterone is a big uh, proponent of saying, like, hey, uh, we should keep that sodium. So let's pull it back in. Hey, let's get that water back in. Like, that's what it's doing. Not in that exact way, but, you know, that's what it's doing. Yeah, I'll stick with that. Um, and also, it's good to remember that sodium and water are lost by just all sorts of things. So, like, breathing, sweating, urination, um, and how much you eat, right? But nobody talks about it. Why? I don't know. Um, so, the second thing we need to consider is blood sodium concentration. Um, hopefully, that's fairly intuitive. Um, yeah, so if you have a lot of salt and a little bit of water, and that's very concentrated. You taste it, it's like super salty and you can't drink it. Um, but then like even your tap water is going to have some salt in it, but it's just so little that you don't taste it. Um, and that'll be less concentrated slash dilute. Um, yeah, and this is the main thing we would normally think of. That's what will actually be tested um, in our blood draws. It's a lot easier to test the concentration of something in your blood than to like I don't know how they test how much total blood volume you have. They're just gonna drain you out or what? But um, yeah, this is what we normally think of when we're talking about blood sodium. Hopefully that makes sense. And also it's influenced by essentially everything that uh, blood volumes influenced by. So that will also largely be um, influenced by aldosterone, since aldosterone is keeping the sodium back in, and then generally keeping the water back in too. So, yeah. All right. And here's one major issue that uh, people seem to talk about, and yeah, so it is to be expected. Thirst. <laughs> uh, so basically, your body's going to want to balance these things out. So for instance, I'm just going to go ahead and say that all of these cells, because it's a pretty decent, um, decent assumption that these cells are going to have the same amount of sodium in them per unit volume that makes sense. So like each cell will have about the same amount of sodium inside. Uh, that's just, yeah, so that's another thing with sodium. Like, your body has to have it to function. Um, so if you avoid sodium completely, you're not being healthy, you're just killing yourself. Um, so don't do that. But, <laughs> but yeah, so cells always need sodium and they will stick with a very consistent level of that. Uh, they're not going to fluctuate between like, I don't know, 50 and 150 or something. Like, they just can't function that way. So, so what we're really looking at, I'll just kind of make this, so these little blue dots are gonna be sodiums, all right? The blue dots are sodium. So normally you have like a certain amount, like, and yeah, so this is isotonic, so it means it's balance. So there's like 100 sodiums inside and 100 sodiums outside. And we're balanced. Uh, sodium and water 
essentially like they want to be with each other more or less um and so in this scenario they're balanced so they don't want to move in they aren't going to move into the cell and out of the cell actually they might be doing that through diffusion but it's like it's going to be balanced so if one goes out then one will come in um but now let's say you have a hypotonic solution so it just means you don't have that much sodium so let's say you have like 50 outside well now you have all this water out there um, and the water wants to be at the sodium and where is the sodium right the sodium is in the cell there's more sodium um, like per liter or whatever in the cell than there is outside of the cell so the water wants to go in and so we will see like this massive swelling um, and there are cases where that can cause the cell to rupture. Um, I'm not suggesting that your cells are going to rupture very quickly, but like it, it, it does happen. Um, but you can also imagine, I mean, it's going to throw off the function of the cell to some degree when there's just too much water. Um, and then now let's say we have a hypertonic solution so we have let's say 150 sodium out here so in the, so in the hypotonic we're looking at it like well there's more sodium inside than there is outside so the water would come in in order to be with the sodium um, but now we have a scenario where there's more sodium on the outside than there is on the inside and so now the water that's inside the cell is like, wow, look at all the sodium out there. I should go be with them. And it does. So it actually effluxes. That's a fun word. And sorry for scratching out shrunk, I guess. Um, but water actually move out. And so then you have less space inside the cell. So it's this dehydrated, sad little <laughs> beef jerky cell floating around. Um, and so that's going to be suboptimal as well. Um, but your body totally understands this. And so it doesn't want the blood to get to 150 or 50. It wants to be at the 100. And these are just made up numbers, all right? I don't remember exactly. Whatever. But these are just made up numbers to show the concept. So, so yeah, so your body wants to be in balance all the time. It wants to have 100 outside, 100 inside. 100, right? So that's why whenever you eat a bunch of salt, like in your body is like, huh, would you look at that? Look at all that sodium in there. Like we should really get some more water in here to balance it out. So that way, like, so like, how do you make that really salty glass of water? Like, how do you make that not taste terrible? It's like, well, why don't you like pour that into a gallon of water that doesn't have any sodium in it, right? And then, so the sodium will have to disperse through more and more space, and then you don't have as much sodium per liter. Uh, and so your body does the same thing. It's like, wow, we've got too much, so we should get more water in here, and that will balance it out. Um, yeah, so that's why you get thirsty. At least, you know, the basic idea, not everything. Um, yeah. So, all right, so this is how we like actually would track everything. Um, well, you don't have to, like this is how I do it. Basically, my fitness pal is just a free app and it will allow you to scan barcodes or you can enter everything in yourself if you're kind of crazy or I don't know, maybe you just have super specialty foods that nobody has ever examined before. But probably not. Um, so, so yeah, this is what I personally use. I I only check this like once every week, two weeks, month. I don't know. I usually don't check it that frequently because I'm generally pretty consistent with my sodium intake now. Um, but yeah, so it's just a really easy way to figure out how much sodium you're eating each day, and you can probably do it in less than ten minutes. Like, it's not that hard, and especially whenever you start scanning the barcodes, it's Oh, it's not bad. 
and also definitely not i'm not getting any support from my fitness pal it's just like i use them and they seem good and also they're totally a decent chance that there's some other app out there that's better i'm just content with my fitness pal so i just use that um yeah barcodes blah blah all right so sodium since most people can retain their sodium right like they have a lot of aldosterone and their body is happy um they the recommended dietary allowance for them mm -hmm. is uh 2300 milligrams but yeah i don't know any addisonians who eat that much and feel well um for me i eat about two times that <laughs> and i feel good um and especially during the summer i have to add more because i sweat more um Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> but but the take home message here is just not to be scared of sodium. Your endocrinologist will definitely tell you that, or very likely will. But but I don't think they really expound on why. And then also like for me, like I went through and I would try, like I'd be like, okay, I'd eat whatever, like two thousand five hundred milligrams, and then I'd see how I'd feel. So I would like keep track of that, be like, okay, I ate 2,500 milligrams of sodium, and I drink whatever, three liters of water, and I feel a uh, seven out of 10. Like I just did that uh, a few hundred times, um, like literally. And eventually you find some pretty good commonalities and you're like, wow, did you look at that whenever I ate 4,000 milligrams, I f feel pretty good. 4,000 milligrams and four liters of water or something like that. Like, and that's actually really close to what I essentially do, but but what I do now. Um, but yeah, so just keep track of it and keep on keeping on. It is hard going, um, but just think about it in the scope of the rest of your life. like. If you can put, if you can figure this out and peg down some good values, um, and if that makes you feel even like five percent better, the rest of your life, I mean, unless you're like 99 and you just don't care anymore, um, but like for me, I'm 28. I'm like wow, I still have like I don't know, 50 or 60 years hopefully. So if I just feel slightly better throughout that whole time, then it's totally worth it to me to sit down for. Uh, like 10 minutes a day for a year and sort this out. Um, at least that's how it went in my mind. If it's not worth it to you, then that's fine. Um, it's not like I'm gonna sit here and <laughs> force this on you, but I guess you're already interested if you watched 18 minutes of this. Um, yeah, so I will close with that because I know this is too long. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, outliftingaddisons at gmail.com um, or comment so that everybody can see, especially if you have a question that will pertain to like everybody or like anybody, right? Like not just you, um, that, would, that would be good. But, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> have a good day and I hope this helps. So.